We're going to take up prayer request after I share for a few moments. I'm not going to be lengthy tonight. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm a little bit tired, not feeling good myself. So uh, uh, just uh, want to share from the Word of God, and then I want us to take some time just to pray. Really have some big needs in our midst, and we to see God work and move. I'll give you the opportunity to share your prayer request once I share from the Word of God. Amen. I said that I don't feel good. I'm just, I think, war, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, it can be that way in life. So uh, uh, God is good. He's faithful. Turn with me to the book of Exodus chapter number 12. Exodus chapter number 12. If you've been around Pentecost for any period of time, you will know uh, this terminology, and it's pleading the blood. And so what does that mean to plead the blood? And is it Bible-based? And uh, I want to show you tonight that, that it's founded in the authority of God's Word. I also want to take the liberty to allow us to plead the blood over various situations in our life. So Exodus chapter number 12, verse number 13. The Bible says, The blood shall be, uh, to, you, shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. Here it is that they're taking that of the Paschal or the Passover lamb. And uh, that lamb uh, is being, he's being slain. He falls. And we find that when he falls, uh, uh, the blood of that, that Passover lamb was taken as a token, the Word of God says, and placed over top of the doorpost of the house. Now, when we look at that word token, that's interesting in itself because uh, it, it is being a symbol of something that is to follow. We know in the, the dispensation of grace what that is. Because it was a token of the blood of Jesus Christ that would be shed upon the cross of Calvary. And so uh, uh, we, we find that the Bible goes on down to say, and when, I when, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. In the entirety of God's whole word, I believe the greatest thing that we can ever come out with in knowing is the blood of Jesus Christ. The Old Testament is a shadow of it. The New Testament is a fulfillment of it. We go farther in the New Testament and we see the workings of the blood of Jesus Christ. And so uh, here it was, was that, that, that lamb had taken the fatal blow so that the blood could be applied to the doorpost. We know that God's very own Son took a fatal blow for you and I that the blood may be applied to our life, amen, so that we could be saved all that was under the covering. Brother Eli, everybody that was under the covering of the blood of the Paschal Lamb that was in the door of the house where the doorpost where it was applied by the justice, every one of them had a covering of safety over top of them. Praise God. If we have the blood of Jesus Christ applied in our life, it doesn't mean that we are just salvageable. It means that we are saved. And, and, and when we look at the blood of Jesus Christ, it, it was nothing that they had done on their own. It was, uh, he said, when I, he didn't say when I see you or when I see your good works, but he said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. It will be a covering. Amen. The only thing that can protect us from the judgment and the wrath of God is the blood of Jesus Christ being applied to our life. Nothing else. But when we, by faith, take the blood of Jesus Christ and we apply it to the doorpost of our life, amen, we are salvageable. We are saved by the blood amen. of Jesus amen. Christ. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. You know, they had to, when they, they, they slayed that Paschal lamb, they had to put faith in that Brother Wally, when they put the blood upon the doorpost, that it was going to bring them safety and protection, Sister Beth. There was faith that had to be placed in the act that was done in the shedding of blood. For us, there has to be faith placed in the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ upon the cross. 
And by faith, when we apply it to our hearts and to our lives, we know that we are safe. Amen. Praise God. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. That he gave himself uh, as a sacrifice, uh, his, his own son. He shed his precious uh, blood, the Bible says in 1 Peter 1, 19. The Bible says, and the plague shall not uh, be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of <coughs> Egypt. See, salvation comes when the plagues are given because they put the blood on the doorpost. But salvation comes when we apply the blood of Jesus Christ to our heart and to our life. Pleading the blood. So I tonight want to look at this for a few moments. Probably if you look back at the history of Pentecost, the early 1900s, you'll find that there are many. Uh, William Seymour, uh, you read of him and you'll read of him praying and that when he prayed, he pleaded the blood of Jesus Christ that men and women would be healed if they were healed. Pleading the blood. You see, the blood of Jesus Christ is a counter agent against everything that's corrupt and sinful in this world. Thank God for the blood. When we plead the blood, amen, the blood of Jesus Christ needs to be a part of our praying. It needs to be a part of our singing. It needs to be a part of our worship. It needs to be a part of our preaching. It's, it's going to be the key elements that bring revival is when we have the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, verse number 19, chapter number 19, verse 13 and 14, to keep thy servant also from presumptuous sins, let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. If there's anything that we need, it is the mercies of God. And the only way that we can obtain mercy in our life is with the blood of Jesus Christ being applied to our life. It brings God's mercy. Hide me in the blood. Keep me from unrighteousness. Forgive me from presumptuous sins. Don't let wickedness have dominion over me. Never let me step outside of the laws of God. God, let me be engaged in a covering of the blood of Jesus Christ. I believe that when we pray, God hears the prayers of the righteous. We don't keep our life covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. I believe it will hinder our prayers. God help us. Exodus 12, 13 says, And, and, and the blood shall be to you as a token upon the houses where you are. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. The plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. When I smite the land of Egypt. See, it was protection from the death angel. I believe that this is the type of prayers that need to be over our homes. God, I believe the blood of Jesus over this home. Whatever your address is, Main Street Likens, Pottsville Street, Main Street Likens, I'm not sure what yours is, brother and sister, but, but, but way up on your mountain, amen, Plead the blood over our home. North Second Street, God, we plead the blood over our home. I believe it brings protection. It brings life. It brings safety. Pleading the blood of Jesus over every aspect of our life. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is salvation come and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before God day and night. But listen what, what the word of God says. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives even unto death. Amen. We want to be overcome. Amen. In every aspect of our life, we've got to plead the blood. I believe that we have folks tonight, amen, that are sick. 
I want to ask us tonight to speak the blood of Jesus over them, over their families. Some folks facing some difficult decisions and some life changes, pleading the blood of Jesus for safety over that. You know, every night in our prayers as a family, we pray and we ask God to watch over us and keep us safe and protect us throughout our day. Even in my life recently, I didn't realize going down the hill in my house uh, a couple weeks ago that uh, it had frozen on the road and I was going slow, but when I was going down, I couldn't get stopped at the stop sign. I looked up and there was a truck. Brother Eli, the power of God allowed me to slide out right before me. It's not what I wanted to do or like to do, Brother Justin, but I believe that that day God has a hand upon. It's the blood of Jesus. It's asking the blood of Jesus to be upon our homes. It's asking the blood of Jesus to be upon our vehicles, upon our lives, that God would touch us, the accuser of the brother. He never stops day and night. He's out to get us. But the Word of God says they overcame by the blood of the Lamb. Pleading the blood Listen, we need to plead the blood of Jesus so that the, the grace and mercy is, it, 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 of God is activated in our life. 1 Peter 1 2 says, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctification of the Spirit and the obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Amen. Do you need the grace of God tonight? I need the grace of God. It comes by the sprinkling of God's blood upon us. How many of you want peace multiplied in your life? It's by pleading the blood of Jesus upon us. God, help us tonight. Amen. I believe it helps us to gain per perfection as well. The Word of God says in Hebrews 13, Now the God of peace, which brought, uh, brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through His blood uh, 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 of an everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do His will. What changes our lives is the blood of Jesus Christ. And I, I want to close by saying this. Hebrews 10, 19 says, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Because of the work of Calvary, tonight we can enter into a holy place. <clears throat> we can enter. We have some folks that are sick tonight. None of us like being sick. It's a, it's an infringement of our lifestyle. But oh, when we by the blood of Jesus Christ go and access to the holy place and bring them before the Father. Have you ever been to the place before where you're tired and you don't feel well and you pray, but <coughs> to know that others are praying for you? Tonight, let's do that. Let's pray for our church that God would move in this church like we've never seen it before. In 2018, God would send us a revival, a move of the Holy Ghost. That God would save souls, that God would heal bodies. Thank God for the blood. Colossians says, And having made peace through the blood of His cross, by Him to reconcile all things unto Him, by Him, things in earth and things in heaven. God ministered by the blood tonight. I want to take a prayer request. Maybe you have a spoken prayer request that you'd like to make known tonight.